There's a new rule in American politics, and the new rule is that no one can make it to the White House without a Latino vote. No one. It is not enough just to say a few words in Spanish. Hola, buenos días, como estas, I like you, me gustas. No, it's not enough. The next president of the United States is going to have to talk to us over here in this newsroom. Because without this newsroom and without talking directly to Latinos, no one really can make it to the White House. <laughs> Immigrant rights are human rights. One of the most difficult things for anyone in the world to be is an immigrant. And it is even more difficult to be an undocumented immigrant in the United States. Right? We have 11, maybe 12 million people who are living right now, as we speak, in fear. People who are being persecuted. People who live in the morning and they don't know if they're going to see their kids because they might be arrested and deported. Stop deportation. I think it is incredibly important to speak for immigrants in this country because they are being mistreated. When I was growing up, I had no idea that I was going to become a journalist because my father wanted me to be a doctor, an attorney, an architect, or an engineer. And of course he was wrong. I rebelled against him. I challenged him. And that's part of being a journalist, that you are rebelling against someone. One of the greatest things about journalism is that you can be a rebel all your life. Journalism is one of those professions that allows you to, to be present in the world, and that's fantastic. So at the end, I was right, and my dad was wrong. Something that has defined my life is the simple fact that I am an immigrant. An immigrant, fortunately, as, as we can see, with a voice, simply because I have a paper that says that I'm a US citizen or that I had a visa. And as an immigrant with a voice, I think part of my responsibility is to speak for other immigrants who don't have a voice. It is incredible, but sometimes you grow, you find strength in opposing those who you know are wrong. So I gotta thank the very authoritarian Mexican government and my first bosses in Mexico City who were so intolerant and against freedom of speech that allow me to, to leave Mexico. Oriana Falacci was a big influence in my life. The Italian journalist who covered many wars and who confronted hundreds of politicians during her life. She thought that an interview was a war and that in a war, Sometimes the interviewee would win, and sometimes the interviewer would win. And she would always fight and question and challenge those who were in power. Then why did you do it for two million people? Uh, uh, Jorge, the, uh, we're, we're not, we're for, not gonna... for six years you no, did it. You listen, destroyed Jorge, many families. Jorge, uh, they uh, called we're, we're, you deporter in chief. I, 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 you called me deporter in chief. I, I did Janet not. From the, 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 uh, but, but let me say this, Jorge. I had to confront him with a promise that he broke. And I had to confront him with the fact that because of him, Thousands of Latino families were broken. When you are talking with those who are in power, I think you have to take the attitude that that might be your last interview. If you don't ask that question, no one else will ask it. What we are seeing right now is the Latinization of the United States. And it's a huge process that is well underway in which more tortillas are being sold than bagels, in which more salsa is being sold than ketchup, and in which Spanish is so important that every single candidate will have to talk to us, otherwise they won't be able to make it to the Casablanca.